I think that's a really great mm-hmm. response. And, and as you're saying that, I'm thinking about a client that reached out to me two days ago. And here, her situation was that they had made an agreement that they would tell each other every time they spend money, right? No matter what the amount was. Well, she actually spent $4 over, right? And so in turn, he spends $1,000 over wow. because infidelity is infidelity. Do you think it's all the same? Well, you know, being able to trust, uh, there's something that we call clean hands, you know, doing things the right way and basically kind of the golden rule, you know, treating others as you would want to be treated. So even though that was $4 over with the agreement, it was breaking the agreement. Mm -hmm. And now on the other side, it doesn't help any to then go and and do the same thing because then you can't expect your partner to hold up the agreement if you're not willing to. So it really, the most important thing is being willing to confront these things and being able to look at these things often and talk about it. And so like we meet weekly, we go over our, um, our cash flow weekly. And I used to be, you know, if Martin spent 99 cents, I would be like, what is this 99 cents? <laughs> it really would happen. Because wow. I would feel like if I didn't know about it, that was a violation of my trust. What is he, you know? And that would be a, a verification of, I can't trust, you know, we can't put our money together. Mm. And so it really just took confronting. And then I had to ask myself, well, is that really a violation? Is he really trying to hurt our family? Or was that 99 cents an ebook that's helping our business, you know? So it really is just looking at what is really happening, confronting and taking responsibility for what you can do and what you can contribute as well. One other question just came in, which I think is great, and it is, one partner who I believe deserves the best has big spending habits. The other partner likes to save money. Are there resources to help create a simple budget plan to cater to the needs of both of them? Yes. Yeah, so first of all, um, you've got to look at, there's a, there's a rule we apply in our life and we teach our clients and this will help you when it comes to budgeting. You first have to know this rule first, then it will help with your budgeting. And that rule is this income, your income must be greater than expenses plus reserves income must be greater than expenses plus reserves. Now, the first thing you got to do is get both people with the different money personalities in agreement that we're going to operate this way. Our income has to be greater than our expenses plus reserves. Okay. Once you, once you have agreement, Hey, we're going to operate this way. Then you look at what are, what are our expenses? What are the necessities we need to run our life, our household? What's the rent, the mortgage, the car payments, all of that. You either write all of those down and you get an, an, an exact amount of the expenses. Then you get an exact amount of the income. What exactly is our income? If the income fluctuates, it's up and down different months, get a good estimate about how much comes in on average. And then you, you plug that into it. Now you have your income and then you have your expenses. And that's where you sit down and you confront that number as a couple and saying, look, I understand that, you know, like, like Danielle was saying, you, you looking at uh, each person looking at their own money personality and creating more awareness. Okay. I agree that my personality was a spender. Chelsea's personality is a saver. In terms of creating our budget, we got to start to agree on what's the needs and what are the wants. And then once you have the needs and the wants in agreement, okay, that's a want. This is more of a need, all of that. You have that all in agreement. You know, the expenses, you know, your income, that's the easiest way to start to create a budget. Don't get too bogged down into all of the too many details and stuff. Look at the big picture. What's your income? What's your expenses? Narrow it down to needs and wants. And then from there, you look at staying within that range and encouraging others to stay within that range. And if somebody violates the budget, don't get mad about it. Have a conversation about it and say, hey, when you violate the budget, it makes me feel this way. Like the couple you're talking about that Mm -hmm. one person spends four dollars over so the other person spent a thousand dollar over what they really should have done was hey i understand you violated a budget by four dollars by you violating the budget by four dollars it made me feel like wanting to go spend a thousand bucks guess what that person who did the four dollars is going to say hell okay i'm not going to violate the budget anymore i want to stay within (laughs) under the four dollars okay because i don't want you to spend a thousand the communication is so key and you know i'm glad i'm glad what you guys do at couples academy to help people navigate all these things because the communication is so vital uh, when it comes to 
uh, creating the budget uh, and creating agreement on that. 